Welcome back, chemistry students. This is Dr. Tullis, and we are moving on to the next section using the equilibrium constant Ka1 or Kb1 and other information to calculate the pH of a solution of a polyprotic acid or base. Because polyprotic acids are capable of donating more than one proton, they present us with additional challenges when predicting the pH of their solutions. For many inorganic polyprotic acids like phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4, notice that we have more than one hydrogen that can be donated. The ionization constant for each successive loss of a proton is about 10 to the fourth to 10 to the sixth smaller than the previous step. That's huge. That means that the first ionization step of a polyprotic acid produces up to about a million times more hydronium ions than the second step. This implies that the pH of many inorganic polyprotic acids depends primarily on the hydronium ion that's generated in the first ionization step. The hydronium ion produced in the second step can be neglected. And the same principle applies to the fully deprotonated conjugate bases of polyprotic acids. Let's look at an example here. We have the carbonate ion, and it's a base in water, so the water is acting as an acid, forming hydrogen carbonate ion, which in turn can form carbonic acid. What is the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of Na2CO3? Na2CO3 is sodium carbonate with an Na plus ions and CO3 minus 2 ions. So the CO3 minus 2 ions is part of this first reaction, which has our Kb1 associated with it. So let's do our ice table. Here we have my carbonate, that's a base. That means it's a proton acceptor. So one of the H's from H2O will donate an H to CO3, so that's where the HCO3, and instead of a minus 2, it's just a minus 1, came from. And the H2O, since it lost an H, is forming our hydroxide on the right. So I started with 0.1 molar of CO3. I'm going to lose X, and on the right, I started with no products. I'm going to gain X. At equilibrium, I'm going to have 0.1 minus X, and for my products, I'm going to have X and X. Let's set up our equilibrium expression. Here is my KB expression. I have my KB is equal to my products over reactants, and my products would be the concentration of HCO3 minus times the concentration of my hydroxide, so X times X, over the concentration of my reactants, 0.1 minus X. Now, notice that my KB, if I took my KB and I times that by 100, that would be 2.1 times 10 to the negative 2. It's still smaller than that initial concentration. So down here, we can neglect that minus x and simplify x squared over 0.1 is equal to the 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4. Now I'm going to get rid of this 0.1. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.1 to cancel that out. And then to get x by itself, I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get x is equal to 4.58 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Now that tells me my HCO3 minus concentration. That tells me my hydroxide ion concentration. And because that tells me my hydroxide ion concentration, I can find the pOH, since this is for my OH ion, and take the negative log of 4.58 times 10 to the negative 3, which gives me a value of 2.34. But we want to know the pH. This is our pOH. So I simply just have to do 14 minus 2.34, and that would give me a pH value of 11.66. Now you might be wondering, well, what about Kb2 and the hydroxide ions that are produced from that? Isn't that going to affect the pH? Well, remember that previous slide we said if there is a second ionization step that we lose about a million times the hydronium or the hydroxide concentration, but we could set it up to just double check. We would set up a new ice table using our second equation here and using the concentration that we just calculated from the first one. So we found the concentration of our HCO3 minus and the OH minus. So that's our initial 
for the HCO3 minus and the OH minus. I'm crossing the water off. We would show that we lose X, and on the right, we had none of that. We gain X, gain X. We would set up our equilibrium expression, setting it equal to my KB2. And if you were to go through all of the process, we would find that X is very, very small, that it is essentially negligible. So we take all of the information that we find from that first ionization step, and that's what we use to find the pH. For this next example, it wants to know the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of oxalic acid, H2C2O4. What are the concentrations of the hydronium ion of HC2O4 minus and oxalate ion? And see the appendix for the Ka values for oxalic acid. Let's write our equilibrium expression. We've got our oxalic acid, H2C2O4, in water solution. We know that it has two hydrogens that we're able to go through this process with, so it's going to donate one to give me H3O+, and then my product will be one less hydrogen, so HC2O4 minus. Let's make our ice table. Hopefully yours looks like this. We were told we started with 0.1 molar, and we had no products. We lose X, we gain X, and so at equilibrium, these are my values. I looked in the appendix for oxalic acid, and I found that my Ka1 was equal to 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2. So that's going to be equal to my products over reactants. I did a quick check to see if we could drop this x in the denominator, and I took my Ka value 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2, and I times it by 100, and that gives me a value of 5.9. That is not smaller than 0.1, so we need to keep that in the denominator. That means we're going to need to use the quadratic formula, so let's cross multiply and see what we get. When I solve for this, I got x squared was equal to 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2 times 0.1, which is 0 0.0059, and then I distributed and I did 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2 times negative x to get negative 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2 x, and then I subtracted the x squared from both sides, so I got minus x squared over here. So I plugged in my A value is negative 1, my B value is negative 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2, and my C value is 0 0.0059. That gave me an X value of 0 0.053 molar. That means that's this concentration, my HC2O4 minus. That is also my hydronium ion concentration, which is there. We can find the pH by taking the negative log of this value, which would give me a pH of 1.28. But then, to get the concentration of the oxalate ion, I need to do one step more. We need to look at that second ionization phase where I start with HC2O4 minus, and I donate that last proton, leaving me with H3O plus right here, because that H is going to give it to water, H3O plus, and that's going to leave me with C2O4 2 minus. But in this case, when I do my ice table, remember this was my concentration for HC2O4 and for the hydronium ion concentration initially. So now I'm going to leave out water here. Minus x, plus x, and initially I had none of that. And then I need to set up my K expression using Ka2. And on the chart, I'm told that Ka2 is 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. So we're going to set up our products over our reactants, and we need to solve for x, because x will give us our oxalate ion concentration. When you do all of your simplifying, so we cross multiplied this, we cross multiplied that, I set each side equal to zero, I got an A value of one, a B value of 0 0.053064, and a C value of negative 3.392 times 10 to the negative six. When I plugged it into my quadratic formula, I got an X, value of 6.38 times 10 to the negative 5. And if I finish with two significant figures, that's going to round to 6.4 times 10 to the negative 5, which is that Ka value. It is very, very small. 
and that x value would be the oxalate ion concentration. Why don't you pause the video here and try to solve this problem. Let's solve this. We set our Ka is equal to our products over reactants after you set up your ice table. So we would have x squared over 0.45 minus x. And because if I did 100 times this Ka, it is not less than the initial concentration of 0.45. So we do have to use the quadratic equation. So when we get our x, our x value after we plugged in the a value, the b, the c into the quadratic equation, we would get x was equal to 0 0.0677 molar. So if I take the negative log of that, the pH would be 1.17. And we can do it on the first ionization step because the pH of many polyproducts depend primarily on that first step. And then the question asked for the sulfite ion. So we had to go to the second ionization step and plug in my products from the first, the HSO3 minus, that then becomes the reactant in water because we are going to get rid of that second H, leaving me with SO3 two minus and H3O plus. We plugged in our ice table knowing this concentration was my initial for here and for the hydronium ion. When we do my products over reactants, we should get a concentration for SO3 two minus that is equal to that Ka2 value. 